Our topic today is um, ionic bonding and ionic compounds. Ionic bonds occur between metal and non-metal ions. So for instance, Sodium chloride is an example of an ionic compound, and an ionic bond is the force of attraction between the sodium cation and the chloride anion. Ionic bonding forces result from the electrostatic attractions of the closely packed, oppositely charged ions. Electrostatic meaning that positives are attracted to negatives. Positives and negatives attract. Closely packed, oppositely charged. So I have an example here of a sodium chloride lattice. Okay, so this is a crystal lattice, and this is the way all ionic compounds come, salts. This is how we see them. Okay, and so this is sodium chloride. NaCl. Notice sodium chlorine, sodium chlorine, sodium, well, sodium ion chloride ion, sodium ion chloride ion, ion. We don't count the number of ions. When we're writing the formula for this um, salt, we use the lowest whole number ratio between the cation and anion. Um, so even though we say NaCl, one sodium for every one chloride, um, that doesn't mean that it's just made up of one sodium and one chloride. Okay, numerous in this salt. Okay, and so this thing forms a lattice work and positives and negatives are attracting each other. Not all ionic compounds, not all salts are... Um, cubes like this. They come in lots of different shapes of crystals. Um, now, ionic solids, salts, have a low vapor pressure. They're brittle, unlike metals. You know, if we, if we hit a salt, uh, it's going to break. And they do not conduct electricity. Okay, so the solid, solid, does not conduct electricity. I'm going to speak more to that in a moment. Okay, low vap vapor pressure. That means that they don't, uh, they don't evaporate. Okay, so the sodium and the chloride do not leave this lattice structure. Very, very little of this is going to evaporate into the air at all. Why? Because of the electrostatic attraction between the positive, the positive and negative ions. So nothing can really leave this matrix. Um, brittle, because if we, if we somehow or another uh, subject it to a force, and let's say we cleave this thing at this line, what ends up happening is that, that positives and positives and negatives and negatives, when they come in contact with each other, they repel each other. They can't just slide, okay? So, so it's not like a metal where we can stretch the thing. It's not ductile at all. So as soon as we, we hit it and it, uh, it comes into contact with the same charged ion, it's just going to cleave. It's going to repel and it's going to break off. So it's brittle. And the last thing is, is if we uh, put a positive and a negative electrode to this, we could not get this solid to conduct electricity. 
but we can get salts to conduct electricity. How do we get them to conduct electricity? What can we do to them so that they will conduct electricity? We can dissolve them in water. And when we dissolve them in water, the cations and the anions separate from each other. The ions are free to move around. And then they act as an electrolyte. So if they are in solution, if, they are, if, if an ionic compound is aqueous, um, they will conduct electricity. Okay. The strength of attraction of ions to each other in the solid state, so in a, a salt, um, in a salt lattice, is known as lattice energy, and it's based on Coulomb's law. And so we'll talk about Coulomb's law in a moment, but basically, you guys, what I'm talking about here is um, how strongly does this sodium ion and this chloride ion, how strong is their attraction? Positive, negative. Okay, so we call this it, the, the salt's lattice energy, and it's based on Coulomb's law. One thing to keep in mind is that the greater the attraction of the cation to the anion, the higher the melting point of the solid, so the more energy it takes to disrupt this solid lattice work and allow this thing to melt. And so the higher the lattice energy, the greater the strength of the attraction between the anion and the cation, the higher the melting point of that salt, that, that salt, higher the melting point. Okay, so let's talk about Coulomb's law um, and how it relates. So, Coulomb's law. Basically, it's a formula. E equals K Q1 Q2 over R. K is Coulomb's constant. Now, we're not going to be calculating any lattice energies here. Um, we, and, and so you guys, Coulomb's law can be applied to any electro, electrostatic attraction. So I mentioned it when we were talking about the attraction between the positively charged nucleus and negatively charged electrons in terms of distance from the nucleus and the strength of the nuclear charge. Okay, so any electrostatic attraction, positives and negatives, obey Coulomb's law. Q is the charge and R refers to distance. Now, when we spoke of this in terms of atomic structure, that would be the distance of the electron to the nucleus. But now we are applying this law to instead the strength of attraction between cation and anion in a solid lattice of an ionic compound. Okay, so this distance in this case is going to be distance between the nuclei of the ions. So basically this tells us that the further, so right, it's inversely related to distance, so the further the, uh, the nuclei of the ions are, the weaker 
the attraction. And so the greater the distance, the smaller the attraction. And these are directly related. So the greater the charge on the ion, the greater the attraction. So let's look at some examples. First, let's sum. Uh, There's a couple of things to write. So again, Coulomb's law, you guys can be applied to any electrostatic attraction between nucleus, positively charged nucleus, and electrons, or positively charged cation to negatively charged anion in a solid ionic compound. All right. So the attractive force, the attractive force is greater where doubly charged ions are combining, like let's say magnesium oxide. Magnesium has positive two charge, oxide has a negative two charge. As opposed to singly charged ions like sodium fluoride. Sodium is positive one, fluoride is negative one. Okay, so the attractive force, the lattice energy, The attractive force is greater when the atomic radii are smaller. Okay, so when the, the radius of the ion, it should say ionic radii, is smaller. When the distance is smaller, they are packed closer together, and that attractive force, in this case the lattice energy, the attractive force between them is greater when their distance is smaller. Okay, so what kinds of problems are we going to see with this? What kinds of questions are you going to be asked? Well, something like this. I have two ionic solids. Potassium hydroxide and sodium oxide. And I can say to you, which has the, let's say, which has the highest melting point? Which has the highest melting point? Basically, I'm asking which has the greater force of attraction? Which has the greatest lattice energy? Well, let's first of all look at charge. Potassium is positive one, hydroxide is negative one. Sodium is positive one, oxide is negative two. Because this has a negative two, charged ion, the greater the charge, the greater the attraction. The sodium oxide is going to have a greater attractive force. The sodium oxide is going to have uh, the greatest lattice energy. The sodium oxide is going to have the highest melting point. Okay, let's look at two other ones. Um, sodium chloride and potassium chloride. Okay, which of these has the highest melting point? Which of these has the greatest lattice energy? Which of these has the greater attractive force? The greater Coulombic interaction between the ions. All right, so if we look at it, sodium is positive one, chloride is negative one. Potassium is positive one, chloride is negative one. So we can't base it on charge here. So what do we have to do next? We've got to go to size, size of the ion. And so then we're just going to go back to what we talked about in quantum theory and periodic trends. Um, chloride is exactly the same, so that's not going to do it. Um, so then we need to think about the sodium ion or the potassium ion. Which of those two ions are smaller? And that's going to be the sodium 
The sodium ion is smaller, so that means that the sodium and the chloride can actually get closer together because the sodium ion is smaller than the potassium. So this is going to have the highest melting point, the greater attractive force, the higher lattice energy, the greater coulombic interaction. Okay, that's it.